Hey everybody, welcome to Facebook Live from here in Oklahoma. I'm Daniel Polk. I do a lot of precision guesswork. This is Richard Moore and he raises beets. <laughs> Come on Daniel, you know his blackberries. <laughs> and I should say farm, not you don't raise beets and farm. Farm beets, yeah. That's the correct way to say that. Uh, maybe Daniel, you could tell us what you actually do here. Yeah, so my position is a technical project engineer. I'll work a lot with our field partners, mm -hmm. especially with the mechanical and semi-mechanical drilling rigs, such yeah, as the LS200 that we use in Uganda, Peru, and uh, Burkina Faso. Yeah, that's really great. And I also work with what you're looking behind me, which is our NUMA water system. So we had a, a team of design engineers and technicians technical people mm -hmm. that uh, put this whole thing together and that's what I've been working on for the past two years while I've been here at Water 4. Yeah, that's great. And like Daniel said, I'm Richard Moore. I'm the director of programs here at Water 4. I work with all of our partners all over Africa and in South America, uh, working with them on their operations and programs. And uh, we're, we're really excited about today. We're kicking off a four-part series called Dig In. Um, so you'll be seeing us over the next few months where we're talking about um, a few of the, the different uh, topics here at Water 4, uh, those are manual drilling, semi-mechanical and mechanical drilling, uh, WAS discipleship, and financial stewardship. Uh, today we're kicking it off by talking about manual drilling and some of the myth-busting questions at Water 4. So Daniel, you think you could start us off with one of those questions? Yeah, so one question we get asked a lot from mm -hmm. family members back home and people emailing us is, how do you dig a well? Well, hmm. we don't, first of all, to answer that question, you dig a well with a shovel. That's right. We don't dig wells. We drill boreholes, and you don't drill boreholes with a shovel. How would you drill a borehole if you're not using a shovel, a pickaxe, or a uh, foot stool digger? Yeah, that's a great question. So you actually drill a borehole using different types of tools and technologies to drill a seven to a nine inch hole into the ground until you reach a sufficient aquifer uh, for the pump that you're installing. So there's several different ways that you can do that. There's several different methods for drilling that borehole. That's pretty interesting. Would you like to start us off with the first method that you typically uh, illustrate to our field partners? Sure, yeah. So there's, there's many methods like we were saying, and one of those is augering. You can see some of those tools here, and another is percussion. So these are two types of manual drilling. Um, a lot of our partners use manual drilling, and what manual drilling is, is drilling that is only using human power. That sounds pretty tough. It's a lot of hard work. I've, uh, I've drilled a few wells myself, and I can, I can vouch for it being uh, a pretty hard job. Yeah. So, um, I'll start us off by talking about augering. And what augering is, is you're using these different augers and a, a drilling team will have different size augers and different types of augers for the different types of soils that they're drilling through. Uh, and the way that they use these augers is they connecting, connect them to a piece of drill pipe here and they use these handles to actually rotate them into the ground. And they rotate them and once the augers fill up, they remove them, empty them, and then return them into the borehole until they reach their desired depth. How long would it take to, let's say, uh, drill to 30 feet? Well, depending on the type of soil, that can happen really quickly. In less than a day, you can drill 30 to 50 feet with augering uh, whenever you're in like loose alluvial type soils. Uh, but augering becomes pretty limited once you start getting into harder formations, uh, such as a hard clay, hard soils, or different types of rock layers. Uh, there is a solution for that uh, using the percussion drilling tools. Uh, Daniel, could you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, so would you hand me one of those auger bits? Of course. So anyone watching from here in Oklahoma or in the States, if you've ever drill, uh, dug a post hole with post holes and you hit a clay layer, mm -hmm. what you oftentimes do is you close those, the post hole diggers and you just chop up that clay yeah. to turn it into a mud and then you kind of remove the clay. Well, if you can imagine these blades on top of a clay, you're trying to scrape that clay. Mm -hmm. it's not, you're not gonna yeah. go anywhere fast. You're gonna yeah. be there for days and days and days. This is an example that a farm boy like me can really understand. <laughs> yeah. So our solution to that is using what's called percussion drilling. 
Here's an example of a percussion bit that is called an X bit. Mm -hmm. Another one is called a three prong chisel. Yeah. So how this works is they use a 100 pound, roughly 100 pound uh, weight that slides up and down in the mm -hmm. borehole and it just pounds this clay, this soft clay or, or hard clay or soft rock, rock material mm -hmm. into a mud muddy slurry. So this is actually a fun drilling technique for the community to get involved where you have this really heavy weight and you're pulling it up and down, up mm -hmm. and down. Mm -hmm. The drilling team eventually gets tired. Yeah. Unless you're six foot two, 240 pounds, <laughs> you're bald and you have a beard, you could probably do it by that yourself. That sounds like somebody that I know. Yeah, ringing a bell? It is ringing oh. a bell. Anyways. So the community, a lot of times, they'll have this uh, the tripod and they'll get off to the side and the community, roughly, I mean, it could be up to 10 people pulling this rope while the sliding hammer is going up and down the board. Yeah. So after they pulverize this clay layer into mud, they use a baler mm -hmm. and they bail out the mud. And then they just repeat that until they get to their desired depth. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And a lot of times our partners uh, in Africa and South America are using um, augering and percussion together. So augering can actually, it works really quick, really fast in the right types of soils. Whenever they reach those hard layers, they switch to the percussion drilling uh, to drill through the harder layers. Daniel, what happens after that? Can they, do they have to continue using percussion? Sure, if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it weighs a lot. So right. they're, it's very strenuous mm -hmm. physically to them. So if they wanted to use a percussion, they could continue drilling. They can even begin drilling with a percussion uh, after the after the borehole just at the surface well after the borehole is begun they can yeah. start using the percussion but like you were talking about the hand augering is so much easier so they would switch from percussion to hand augering just yeah. based on what they're drilling yeah and that's really the versatility of using the, these two types of technologies together is they really work well whenever you get to a hard layer you can use the percussion drilling and then switch back to augering yeah it's great Is there anything that we miss with the hand augering, hand augering and percussion? Do we, do our field teams only use hand augering, or is this would be this considered like one drill kit that they would use? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Uh, these um, these tools are typically um, used by our partners as a kit. Um, they, sorry, I'm kind of. Kind of drawing a blank here. They, don't, uh, don't worry, we can edit that. Later. Yeah, we'll just edit that out. That's great. We can do that, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're typically used as a kit in a combination, and they take them to the field, uh, you know, as this kit to drill to drill the water well. So. Well, how, so okay, we're talking about hand augering mm -hmm. and percussion. How many trips do you normally make to drill a borehole with this method? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I typically travel six to eight times per year, but very few of those trips, actually none of those trips, are to go and drill water wells. Uh, whenever I travel, it's mainly to support our enterprise partners uh, and the work that they're doing in Africa. Um, it really focused around enterprise development and the water well services that they provide. Water well, water well services. Yeah, water well services. That's a tongue twister for a slow southern boy like myself. Would you like me to tell you a little bit more about it? I would love that. So water well services encompasses uh, the different aspects of the, the, really the water services that our partners provide. Um, so what Water4 does is we train them in hydrogeology, pump installations, so from electrical pumps to submersible pumps, different types of drilling technologies and on like the service and insurance agreements that we use to ensure that our pumps and water systems function for the long term. Wow. Yeah. I'm getting a sense of empowerment, uh, capacity building, being at the foundation. It is. So we focus a lot on manual drilling, empowering with tools and technology mm -hmm. and information. That's right. Is that what Water4 is all about? This capacity building for manual drilling? You know, it's, it's not all that Water4 is about, but it, it goes back to kind of our foundation and our roots from where we started. 
uh, we did start out really focusing on these technologies and training our partners to use them. And I think that's really one of like the, the innovative parts about Water 4. Um, really one of our core values is innovation. And um, you know these tools that you can see here, we've invested a lot of time and energy uh, with our staff here at Water 4 and our partners in Africa to develop these tools and refine them uh, to really improve the whole manual drilling sector and for the partners that we work with. Uh, so no, it's not the only thing that we do. Uh, we also um, train and work with our partners in enterprise development, wash, discipleship, leadership, and a few other areas. You said wash, does that mean you wash your tools when you're finished drilling a borehole? Well, you can wash your tools, uh, but that actually means water sanitation and hygiene. And really what that is, is working in the communities that our partners serve um, to teach them how to, to safely handle, store, and use clean water, and then also to improve like some of their um, hygiene practices, such as uh, critical times to wash your hands. I want to go back to the innovation. Yeah, so sure. some of the innovation does happen here in Oklahoma. But what we've seen is our, our the field partners that we're working with, they also provide a lot of in innovation for the tools that they use. And they one really example do. is we'll get more into this in the next series. So I don't want to uh, get, give, you, give too much away. But just to give you a preview of semi-mechanical and mechanical drilling, we use Cori. Mm -hmm. And one of that is aspects of coring is you have to remove the core yeah. after you cut through and one of the field partners helped design the tool that removes this core of granite or rock that's right which was really great to see as an organization in this capacity building is that we're feeding information they're feeding information yeah. back and we're just this collaborative effort between water for and field partner that's right I mean some of those examples can even be seen here um, you'll see that there's an auger here and the top of it is open. Our partner said, well, what if we can close that auger to allow us to remove sand? So with an open auger, the sand all can just fall back out after you've drilled through it. But when it's closed like this, it makes it a little bit harder for sand and other loose soils to come out. So that's a really great point on how innovation goes both ways. We're driving innovation and our partners are driving innovation back here to us. Exactly. Can you rotate that auger so that everyone sure. on the other side of the camera can see this? Yeah, you can of the see blade. those differences. Cool. And then I think another example here is just this X bit. I mean, this was a bit that was driven by the field, uh, the development of it from our partners in Sierra Leone and Uganda. They really pioneered this and began using it within their drilling operations. And we refined it and made it uh, replicable and able to fit onto our other water for drilling tools. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, in this whole time, you've probably, be, probably been hearing empower, innovation. It's almost like we have that built into the core, into the mission statement of water for. Yeah. So there's two components, right? Mm -hmm. Is there, are there any more? There are. Okay. Well, what are those? So really four of our guiding or core values here at Water 4 actually represent the four in Water 4. And I think that's one of those myth-busting questions is like, what is the four in Water 4? And that, that, is, that is fire. That means um, we use fire to boil out all the contaminants of water. Well, you could use fire to do that, but that's not what I'm talking about. So the fire that I'm talking about is faith, innovation, reimagine, and empower. Those are our guiding values here at Water 4, and you know the one that we've talked the most about today is innovation. Innovation and empowerment. And empowerment, that's so, right. So, like I, we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this is a multi-part series called Dig In. So today we're talking about manual drilling, hand augering, and percussion. Yep. The next episode we're going to talk about mechanical and semi-mechanical drilling, which it's in my, I mean, for me, it's, just, it's even more fun because you get to use heavy equipment and of course. you get to innovate post hole diggers into a coring machine. Yeah. That's, no one else does that, right? Right. There's more that you can break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's more that you can break. Yeah. Uh, it, it is 
more uh, costly, but it is a very cost-effective solution in certain yeah. applications. It's true. So we're really all about appropriate technology, and these types of technologies are appropriate in certain areas. But in other areas where you have harder geologies, or the, the, the water table is much deeper, you need to use more mechanical types of drilling methods to allow you to dig deeper uh, to those aquifers. Or just dig in. Or dig right. in. Yeah, hey, that's the name of the series. Yeah, <laughs> almost like we rehearsed that. Yeah. <laughs> so, we were talking about wash a few minutes ago. That's right. In our next episode, we're gonna be talking about mechanical and some semi-mechanical. Mm -hmm. But later in the month, we actually have a, uh, a series on World Toilet Day, specifically for WASH, which is okay. water, sanitation, and yeah. hygiene. Mm -hmm. So that will be a really good time to, to more explain how we train our field partners to train communities on hygiene principles. So it's yeah, this I principle agree. of training of trainers, mm -hmm. right? That's true. Well, all right. I. Uh, I think that just about covers this part of dig in and uh, the manual drilling equipment that we use. Uh, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us for the last yeah. 15 minutes. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, do we have any questions? No? No questions. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks.